Tonight on Debate Among Friends, we will be discussing NFL Week 2, uh, some NFL injury updates, the NFL's most disliked player, and a little Capcom Pro Cup starting now. <laughs> This is Debates Among Friends live on Mixler. Like us on our Facebook page at Debates Among Friends. Tonight is the 20th edition of this podcast. As always, I'm known as the Professor. And joining by my side every single week, come rain, snow, thunder, or hail, is the good old doctor. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Ready for discussing and debating. How are you doing, sir? You know, given all the calamity that's been going on this week, it's good to just lay back and start a good old debate. Yeah. But we can't do it alone this week, ladies and gentlemen. We got ourselves a special guest. Yes, we got ourselves another special guest. Deal with it. Uh-oh. Coming to us from the DMB, the M in the DMB, we have the Sergeant. Sergeant, how you doing tonight? I am I can't wait for us to get started. Let's jump right into it. We're going to start talking about the NFL Week 2. Just got finished wrapping up on Monday. We have, we have Week 3 starting tomorrow night. But any notable games that y'all want to talk about this week? Well, I'll jump out and say Tampa Bay Buccaneers played. Oh, my God. <laughs> can, I, can I just stop there? I mean, I have to stop there. I mean, last week I got a chance to be really, really excited. And, I mean, you want to talk about the sun going down and it's not coming back out tomorrow. My God, did I just see five turnovers. It all seemed like it was back-to-back. It was like there was nothing but a thunderstorm of turnovers. And I was sitting there, I was like... The a, turn- a cornucopia of uh, turnovers? Is that it what you're was, trying to say? It was one of the most unelectrifying things I had ever seen. And I'm sitting there like, what in the world is going on? It's like... Jameis said, well, guys, we had a great game last week. Let's, let's bring it back a little bit. We don't want to set our expectations too high and go for a playoff in week two, of course. But to not come off the bus is kind of ridiculous. You know, it was just very, mm, I would just say out of character for Jameis. I mean, was- just like you said, he had some, himself a great game. But – I mean, we're also going to talk about this in the second part, but, I mean, a big factor for them struggling as much as they did is because of the key injury in their backfield on offense. But ultimately, you know, and I had a few conversations, you know, the doctor, he talks football. This is what he does. This is what he he loves to do. He talks football. And, you know, I'm here. I do. I had an opportunity to discuss something um, with one of my other good friends, a fellow analyst of the game, and he basically mentioned that, hey, a lot of teams like the Bucks, even his Packers, you know, had these, they got these gunslinger mentality. They think they can do whatever they want. I mean, Not- it was so interesting, though, that you mentioned the Packers. I mean, but we're going to talk about that <laughs> one in just a second. Let's finish up with the Bucks about the Packers without question. But uh, with this particular team, I mean, the Cardinals didn't really have to do anything but sit back and let us dig ourselves in the hole. I mean, and that was a few games. Um, and, and, you know, move, and after this, I really want to talk about the Buffalo Bills. Because uh, that's definitely a team that we have to discuss. Um, but I just felt like the Bucks and the Cardinals, at this point, I hate to say it, but they are who we thought they were. And that's why you took the darn field? And that's why we took the darn field. Let's talk real quick about that Packers game. Hmm. That that divisional game. That prime time game. 
Patrick. What did you guys think? I got a chance to sit here and just sip my tea, eat a few cookies, and I was sitting there and I was like, is this Sam Bradford, a little Oklahoma reunion between Sam Bradford and Adrian Peterson? Never well, I mean, for most of the game, AP was there. I don't even think he was there. I don't. I didn't see him. He well, I mean, well had, it, it he helped him up. out because, and and you know, we're, we'll talk about the impact of AP being out. But I mean, they had eight people in the box most of the game, so it opened up the passing lanes. Well, I mean, look, this was like the stars and chime in. I mean, because I just want to make this one point here when. The Vikings brought in Josh Freeman. I think that was two seasons ago when he left the Bucks, or three seasons. How many years ago that was? They gave him maybe about 10 to 20 plays, I felt like. He went out there in that Sunday night game against the Giants or Sunday night game against the Giants, got destroyed out there. And it was one of those situations where, okay, that could happen to here. So, of course, the Packers loading the box thinking, hey, they're going to try to run it. We got to let – Sam Bradford beat us, and surprise, surprise, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Bradford beat him. It was a very compelling game, though. Sergeant, what were your thoughts on that game? You know, I was actually upset that I missed that game, but I caught the highlights from it. And what was surprising is it played out a lot like a preseason game. Mm. Like, it, it wasn't... It didn't feel like anybody was actually playing to get to the playoffs. It was more of a scrimmage. I mean, can we, expect that? can we expect that in a week two matchup? I mean, I know this is a division game. I mean, but in every game in the NFL does matter. Maybe not as much as like the NFL and the MLB, but every game in the NFL does matter. Do you, so you're feeling like the Packers and the Vikings both kind of showed a lack for the future standing? Well, okay. Uh, my, my stance is this. And this is me speaking as a Titans fan and going oh. to the season after season of the Titans doing what they do. They will come out strong, and then by the time the end of the season, beginning a playoff hit, you just got to fizzle at best. And it pisses me off every season, yet every season I expect it. Wow, you know you know what that sounds like? And I'm going to state this person right now as well, too, because he's talking stuff on the chat. It sounds like the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to Mr. October out there on the chat. He says, damn, Packers screwed up my knockout pool. So, I'm <laughs> sound about that. I mean, as a Bucs fan, I can definitely relate to the Titans. The Titans have always been a good team. I love them when, you know, Steve McNair, you know, you had Javon Kirsten, all those guys. I mean, but... The Packers, and this and this goes back to what my friend said. He was a diehard Packers fan. Now I called him. I said, "Bro, I don't know what the heck happened. Why aren't they giving the ball to Eddie Lacy? Can anyone explain that to me? He lost the weight. That was a big problem. Oh, he's too heavy. He yeah. lost the weight. Think about twenty, twenty-five pounds. If I if I remember the report, we talked about it in one of the earlier episodes. He lost the weight. I think I gave him. You know, he's going to be the breakout player. They're running him about." maybe 10 to 12 times splitting with James Starks, which is very odd because he's really not getting the full chance to break out. I get it. They might be trying to save him for the rest of the end of the season or toward the end of the season, but... You have but, him but does that really matter, though, especially if they, you know, fail to even make the playoffs? Exactly. Right. There's no, <laughs> that's, 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 no point holding back. That's what I was supposed to say. Yeah, that's not something that you do if you actually like my whole thing if I were a coach and I'm not but if I were a coach I'd be ruthless just put that out there but I would want to do whatever it is I need to do within the legality of the NFL to get my team to the playoffs once we're there we can cross that bridge when we get to it but in the meantime in between time I can't plan for it if I never make it there so what hey, you're saying so, is you either got to be Bill Belichick or Sean Payton? In a sense, yeah. I don't know about Sean Payton. Maybe Sean Payton was the wrong choice. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, was that too low? Yeah, maybe Rex Ryan or somebody. And, you know, again, we're going to go to the Bills. I have to go to the Bills. But I'll get it. 
And as somebody who did coach, you know, I remember in a preseason game, you know, I was calling the offense for the first scrimmage, and, you know, I had this 6'2", 6'3", 250-pound behemoth of a back, you know, who could run in the fours. Like, he was a legit back from Massachusetts. And I took him out because, you know, it was a scrimmage. You know, we're trying to just get some reps in, you know, make sure everybody's good. And he was so mad. Like, he was so mad that I took him out. And I was like, well, he just had a big run. You know, we want to get some other guys in. Let's see how it happens, you know, let, let it play out. And he was so furious. And I think that's what it's going to take for some of these guys to get more carries. They're going to get really mad. And if it's me, I'm agreeing with you. I think you got to be ferocious. you got to hound them in the beginning. And then toward the end of the game, you go with James Stark, the quicker back, so that you can kind of get those bigger runs because they're tired now. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. But I didn't see that. I think, you know, I think that was one of the uh, running backs, I think, either for the Vikings or a different team that i seen. And I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but he would just, like, win it after the first quarter. So, I mean, I definitely understand what you're saying. But at the same time, too, I mean, running the ball definitely helps any team closer to a victory and even closer to a championship. I've been aggressing. The Packers are really passed at me, but I really do think, and of course we have to move on to other teams and do plenty of other games, but the Packers, I don't think Aaron Rodgers and Joey Nelson are there yet. You know, and they tried. Not yet, not yet. There's only it's only week two, though. There's only week two. But see, okay, well, hold on. See, and this, this is my other issue with the way that game is down. I'm like, you have almost six months in there to get yourself ready to do whatever it is you need to do in the off season to come back for training camp, get a little better, work out with your guys, and hit it hard. Then you still have preseason to work out all the kinks. By week one, you should be ready. Now, look at in Jordy's defense, you know, he didn't play at all in the preseason, and it's the sense. I mean, I'll, I'll say that, but that doesn't – I don't know if they practice on – you know, some guys get together and they practice on their own. But, right. I mean, I wouldn't – they were trying to run back shoulder throws and it just wasn't there. And that last interception was so obvious. I think I wrote on, on Facebook, everybody, including Trey Wayne, knew where Aaron Rodgers was throwing this ball. Absolutely. <laughs> so – I was just so shocked that he actually threw it and then got intercepted, and I was just like, well, that's it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a game for Sam Bradford, I guess. And, and Stephon Diggs, who I really, really Stephon loved last year. Stephon Diggs, who, uh, who, by the way, I believe did so well in fantasy that it probably broke a lot of people's hearts, or as let's say, the debates among friends, tore down people's face mountains. As Rick Flair would say, late night. Heartbreaks out there. Heartbreaks. <laughs> um, but, I mean, obviously there were some other games uh, we, of course, we should talk about. I know Tennessee did play this week. Uh, how did you feel about the emergence or lack of, of Marcus Mariota? <sighs> okay. This is going to sound a little contradictory. And perhaps even hypocritical, but Sergeant, it's okay. This is the Bates among friends. We we are made for this stuff. <laughs> you know, and that's fair. But I, you know, I don't like being a hypocrite. But in this particular case, I have to, because again, that's my team. But I feel like with him being new to the team and new to this line, it may take, I don't know, maybe a good full season for him to actually get acclimated and you know, basically do what it is they brought him in to do. But just judging from that game, I wasn't seeing it. I mean, the one thing that, that surprised me was that they did draft Derrick Henry, and then they went out and traded for DeMarco Murray. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't uh, – I didn't know about that one. I felt – I like Derrick Henry. You know, I wanted him to get a shot. I don't know how he's doing. You know, I don't. I think Marco's getting a good amount of the cap. But uh, I, I mean, obviously they wanted to work on the run game, and most teams are working on the run game. Although not too many, not too many teams are actually running the ball effectively. 
this year so far. I haven't really seen any running back really, really dominate. I think the guy from the Chiefs, that game was ridiculous. So I think Spencer anybody, Ware, yes. Yeah, I think you know, everybody should have did well that game. But I just don't think this is one of those situations where, you know, running backs are really doing great out there. You had the numbers, so number one and number two rusher from last year now both injured. Of course, we're going to get to that later. But no one's really dominating. But do you see, now, looking at the, the two games, um, can you see why James went first and Marcus went second? You know, I can. And <laughs> I'll even go as far as Like, I, I just – I renamed the season hashtag heartbreak for the Titans because I was so hyped going into the season. I was like, dude, you restructured your team. It looks like you got some good backs. You know, they got a great offense. You even switched they up have a great a little bit. Huh? The Titans have a great offense. Right. And and great defense. You know, and, and, you know, I was expecting, once again, that Titan spark to come into the season strong and end with a fizzle, but. I was hoping that this time it would end a little differently as you, you know, again, went ahead and restructured your team. That week one, I was like, man, that was uh, that was a bit of a letdown. But I was like, you know what, I can get over it. I can tell it's, it's week one, it's week one, you just restructured the team. You know, you still got a little bit of kinks to work out. All right, let's see what you're doing week two. Week two, all right, it's a little bit of a letdown. I'm like, okay, if, when week three rolls around, if it's the same story, I don't know. I might just have to abandon my playoff dreams. Oh, no. I mean, they, so you just, you're you not happy in which they beat the Lions. I, you know what? I'm really not. And I look, I kind of win a win. Yeah. But yeah. I kind of feel like for all of the trading and drafting and rigmarole that you went through to get this line, I'm just not seeing the return on that investment. I could definitely understand that. And, I mean, it's one of those things where I think it's going to take some time, and I guess that's what the knock was on Mariota. But I really think he's good. I don't. I haven't really watched the Titan game since he lit the Bucks up last year. Um, <laughs> that, was the last, that was the last time I watched him play. But, I mean, I know he's good. I don't know if they went away from that team. And, of mm-hmm. course, uh, you know, again, because I haven't watched. But whatever they were doing – at that time, it was working. I don't know if it's because the Bucks are, were bad on defense or if the Titans were really good on offense or, or just executed, but they really have to get and play towards his strengths, and I think that's where that's where the wins are going to come in, playing towards his strengths, which is mo- he's mobile. Bring in somebody right. who, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to play that yep. way. You know, Absolutely. And that's, the, and, and that's the thing. is like, think back to – what was it, the 97, 98 Titans? Back when McNair and George and, you know, all those guys were on the team. And they were a mobile team. It didn't matter what you did. You couldn't stop the run game. You couldn't stop McNair once he got out the pocket. Like, they were a beast on offense, but it's because they had all those moving pieces. And in the trades, I can see where they were trying to get back to that. But at the same time, they need an offensive coordinator who's going to be able to play to all of those strengths. Because, well, as a piggyback on what you just said, though, I mean, it's not just the OC that they really need, though, uh, that as well, too, but it's also trying to recapture that lightning in the bottle. Right. That, sure. team, that team was... Like, it, it's hard to re... It's hard to reduplicate a certain team. Yeah, because you know the Bucks were trying to reduplicate that 2002 Tampa Bay defense. You know, they went out and got McCoy... You know, you got Levante David trying to emulate Derek Brooks. So, I mean, teams are starting to build that way. It's just, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you're hoping that maybe Derek Henry or DeMarco Murray can bring that power running game back, which honestly, and I think the professor has said this in the past, he does not understand why Derek Fisher always gets the job. Uh, I don't, it's a long is time it, since he said this. Like Derek Fisher? I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I meant Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher shouldn't get a job either. 
but I meant Jeff Fisher, uh, <laughs> who's now with the Rams. He, he always gets a job, and I think, I forget what we were talking about. This is before the podcast even was thought about. But Oh, we was, we was talking about the lack of um, of coaches of ethnic backgrounds getting chances. And you kept saying that Jeff Fisher kept getting opportunities. At the opportunities, at the opportunities, and it's a fact. It is a fact. Um, but, I mean, speaking of coaches, this is a great segue into – the Buffalo Bills, yes. who made a coaching change do the week. And this is the story that I heard. I heard um, I heard the report on, on ESPN. He was going to take the team photo. He took the team photo and then got the call that he was being fired. Ooh. So he went from smiling. This, this, is, not, this is their words, not mine. He went to smiling to packing up his thing. That's crazy. That's that's like that's like being Mona Lisa and having a big doo doo grin and then someone pass gas at first and start drawing. Like <laughs> But my thing is week one, gotcha, okay. They struggled, you know, they didn't score more than 10, 10 points. I think they yeah, they scored seven points against the um the Ravens. So the Ravens defense got torched by the Browns this week, but the Ravens defense, obviously not as good as they used to be, but good enough to hold them to seven. Absolutely. This, this past week, they scored 30 something points, and then the offensive coordinator loses his job. That's, that right there is unbelievable when it's really the defense that's not holding their end of the deal. And who might I add, is responsible for this defense. Just right. Just right. Ryan, the head coach <laughs> of Buffalo Bills. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, I got I got BS in my throat. I had to cough okay. it out. And you always got to get rid of that. That BS is all. <laughs> but it was so I was so shocked. I couldn't wait to talk about this. I mean, your team is scoring. Your team moving has, the ball. And moving the ball. Yet. Your offensive coordinator, who, who was the highest paid offensive coordinator in the league, gets the axe. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I feel like it was a power move, but I believe I said that before off cast as well, too. I feel like it's a power move. I mean, honestly, that sounds like somebody was sleeping with somebody more important's daughter. Uh-oh. I mean, Shout out to Cisco. I'm just saying. Like, oh, I like that. <laughs> that's, that's one of those things. Like, sleeping in my bed. <laughs> if he was a postal worker, he'd have came back and shot the place up. All of right. course. Yeah. Oh, 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 we can't say that on the podcast. Oh, we can't say bad. that. <laughs> if he were a government worker, he'd be disgruntled. How about that? There we go. There we go. That makes sense. So that one I, but, I mean, I absolutely agree, though. I mean, my goodness. Picture fire. That's crazy. And it's like, how do you even justify that? Like, what excuse do you have to come back and be like, yeah, well, you know, we fired him a week two because he wasn't working out? Like, but it's only this week two. <laughs> we, I mean, it could be something like it could be something like Rex Ryan went up to the owner and was like, "Yeah, I kind of went into the shower at the same time as the OC, and I looked down and I got pissed off, so we didn't oh, fire him oh, now." Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Buzzing. But I think it might. Or it has to be more of, hey, like, and you know, I always go back because I can only relate to things that I know. Um, with Tampa, when Lovey Smith took over the D. Defense last year for Leslie Frazier, it was because people were calling for Leslie Frazier and his son said, you know, because the defense just wasn't working. You know, uh, um, Lovey took over. Obviously, defense still wasn't working, which led to Lovey getting fired. I'm thinking that this might be one of those situations where, hey, if Rex does not make the playoff with this tremendously talented team. You've got the quarterback that you wanted. This quarterback's locked in for, for years. He's going to be there for most of his prime. You have got to win for you're going home. Hey, I'm totally fine with that. If and anything I mean, else, Rex will turn into the next uh, Jeff Fisher. Oh. <laughs> I went there. Like, you know, one of those things, uh, okay, if, if this were some backroom deal, then and you know, happy Gilmore style, either you win week two or you're fired, then just come out and say that, you know, contractual obligations were fulfilled. 
give us a BS line, but don't just leave it like that and then assume that no one's going to notice or care. Because right. like, I could go on through the off-season. Yeah, like, who wants to go through the off-season, pre-season, and then get to week two? I mean, that's a time away from your family. I mean, I know it's a business, of course, but who wants to go through all that just to be let go? So I would be... I would be disgruntled, as you mentioned. <laughs> I don't know, because, I mean, at the same time, we can make the same claim for those very same players who get cut at the beginning of the season as well, too. Or, heck, see, I mean, but, dare I say get traded at the beginning of the season? But see, here's the thing. <laughs> you had the whole off yeah. and training camp to make that determination. Well, right. But see, that, yeah, well, that's the problem. There's not a lot of players. There's not a lot of There's not a lot of offensive coordinators out there. And then anyway, Frank Roman is a great offensive coordinator. He is really what is the problem with the 49ers. <laughs> Once they let him go, that's why they've taken this decline, um, and which you see what happened with Colin Kaepernick. But I really think that this is one of those situations where I do agree. It might be just a, this power move, like, hey, I have to do things my way. I want to run the football because that's what Rex does. Maybe Greg didn't want to run the football. He wanted to pass. And that just wasn't working for him. Well, if anything else, they can try to find a way to get Mark Sanchez back from the Cowboys. hi yo! But with that, we're going to go <laughs> on to our next subject. We're going to talk about some of the more notable NFL injuries that's been going on. There's been a bug lately. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a sick bug. It's not a flu bug, but it's an injury bug happening in the NFL. I mean, the most I mean, notable no, one was. Out. <laughs> what happened? I said, no, that's just vacation time. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's little, also subjective, break. but... <laughs> but we've got here, we got ourselves a couple of haters trying to get the break. A little break. break. <laughs> but let's go out of the... Let's go out of the... Let's go out of order here. Let's start with New England Patriots quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Yes. How did you the, feel? The one quarterback who people can seriously get his name wrong. Oh my goodness! Yep. Let me get a plus. What those people get the plus of the week? Because mm. we haven't decided that yet. I think we'll we'll be able to decide as we go along. There we go. Let's let's continue on then. For now, well, the pers- for now those people get a plus. Well, what do you think about Jimmy Garoppolo going down? How unlucky or lucky is Bill Belichick? I think it was just unlucky. Because, I mean, like, it was a regular that's tackle. It. Like, it wasn't it was crazy. Unlucky. It was a regular tackle. I didn't feel like there was anything too crazy. Uh wasn't a, a late hit or anything like that. Um, but they he, he played a heck of a game, though. And luckily, they only have to deal with this for two more games. And then Brady comes back, and nobody will but, really. I mean, he threw three touchdown passes. He was on pace for at least five or six. Well, he was on fire. Like, 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 like to quote an old school video game NBA Jam. He's on fire. <laughs> he's no he, good. He, That's well, why he went down. He was actually heating. He was actually heating up to he's go. He's heating fire. up. <laughs> and, then he, and then he got hurt. And then he cooled off really quickly. But I mean, the the the, the, the uh, rookie came in. Obviously, he played. Well enough to just hold on to the lead. That's all he had to do. Willie Demon style, go in there. All you got to do is hold on to the ball, Willie, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do we think? I heard that they're they're preparing wide receivers to play backup. Julian Edelman. Yes. Say, what? Uh, that. <laughs> Julian Edelman <laughs> yes, played. That, that was the. Uh... That was the big news that broke out actually late yesterday, but it went into more yeah. details today that the Pats might be, after trying to pressuring Jimmy Garoppolo, Garoppolo, however people want to call it these days, yeah. uh, pressure him into playing tomorrow, but it looks like they're going to either stick with their rookie from NC State or put Julian Elliman under center. I think they'll stick with the rookie and let Julian come in as a backup. I mean, they have a very simple system. Quick throws, run the football, don't turn the ball over. There's no great thinking. There's no, it's like, there's nothing but short crossing routes and ground plays. You already know that it's going to be short plays, 
he loaded the ground, run the ball, red load Gary Blunt, and call it a day. I mean, that's, that's it. Basically, it. That's basically and, it. That's their offense. It ain't broke. That's it. I mean, but I think that it, either way, it'll be definitely okay. Um, but let's not stick too long because we do have some other injuries. What do we think about Adrian Peterson? Hmm. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, well, I, I already said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I, I have no qualm by saying my opinions, because this is the Beats Among Friends, brought to you by Stella Otoise. I think, I think this is the end for AP. Like, he'll come back one more time, but he's not going to be as sane. Like, I really think this is the end of the row for him. You know, so, I mean, do you think that, hey, you know, Adrian, you've been a Viking, so plus uh, eight plus years, you've been there for a while. They asked him to restructure his contract, maybe? They maybe, might. Maybe even, dare I say, cut Adrian Peterson? I don't think they'll cut him. I think they'll buy out his contract. I think in the NFL... They just cut. Uh, Mr. October also says he agrees. He doesn't know if uh, AP will have the same explosiveness. But AP really hasn't had the same explosive, explosiveness since, you know, the knee injury, though. I mean, this is the meniscus. This is really serious. And they said he had a small um, LCL tear. Yes, that one actually came out late uh, today as well, too. Uh, he could potentially have more than meets the eye. AKA a Transformer reference for those who don't know that out there. So he could be done. This could be freaking Lance. This could be it. Lance from Varsity Blues right here. Like he has to like just go into coaching. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he went there. <laughs> I mean, say that like it's gonna be a bad thing. It's not. It's actually a great movie. If you haven't watched it out there, watch Varsity Blues. It's a great movie. But I'm digressing. Digress. I mean, but now what do the Vikings do? They have. Uh, Matt Asiata, which, you know, Adrian Peterson went down before. He stepped in, played very, very well. Then you have McKinnon. Yeah. McKinnon, who plays very well as well. I mean, can they help Sam Bradford get this team to the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, I just think it's so unfortunate how many injuries the Vikings got so far this year. That's true. That's Fair true. enough. Fair enough. Oh, but I mean, honestly, ooh. I don't think they're going to get rid of AP for as long as he is putting butts in seats. Like, it's, oh, it's, absolutely. Weird. it's the same thing with Peyton out in uh, Indianapolis. I mean, when you say that, I think Peyton continues <laughs> to put butts in the seats. But I really uh, think that they would, they would cut AP if one of those two running backs were to really catch fire and. Stephon Diggs really emerges as the number one wide receiver that he's. I think he already. Wait, who's the who's the number one wide receiver in Minnesota? I think his name is. I thought it was Stephon Diggs. No, oh, they have him listed as number two. That's what I thought too. But they have him listed as number two, which is really dumb. They have this other guy, <laughs> Charles something or another. But he's the number one guy. He's always been number two on their depth chart, but he always winds up having great seasons, and eventually. They're gonna have to show him some respect and Uh-oh. and show him the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we got him there. Uh, but well, and it's funny that you mentioned, you know, if one of the two running backs actually emerges and do great. I mean, it's ironic because someone else did something similar, and they got rid of their quarterback and this very same quarterback is now in Kansas City. And we're talking about Alex Smith. And that's Word. true. But see, that was a, that was an emotional move on the part of the 49ers. Really, really emotional. Like, oh, Cap came in. Think about it. Alex Smith is a game manager. You know, he manages games. Yes. You know, he's the West Coast offense all the way. Kaepernick, really exciting. He's got to run. He's got to pass. He's got the arm strength, the tattoo. You know, he's going to go out there. He's going to make all the throws as hard as he possibly can. But when you look at it now, it was a bad move. It was. It was a terrible move, and now they're suffering from it, too. They are suffering. 
but continuing on with injury lists, I mean, we also had a few notable injuries at the market where any Woodhead and Josh McCown went down. That's true. That's true. Josh McCown went down. Oh, hell. Yeah, so you lose RG3 and then you lose Josh McCown. Josh McCown. Now they have a rookie <laughs> starting. Um, which the Browns, they just can't win right now. I mean, I don't they know. Just can't I, think win. They, I think I sent a, a message to the professor earlier about them losing a, a wide receiver. They lost. They lost their wide receiver, and they could potentially be losing Josh Gordon as well too, due to a precarity case too. Well, dude, word of BH1, guess who is not having the best week ever? <laughs> Cleveland Browns. Uh, there's some other notes, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the top two running backs from last season were both are both out now as Doug Martin. Yeah, as October just said that uh, these injuries work out for his Giants. Oh, uh, what? Giants have, to be, <laughs> Giants have to be desperate to win because I'm going to get back to them later. But, but we're going to go on to our next subject. But before we do well, that, we have well, now identified our players of the um, week. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's run Uh-oh. through. Wait a minute. Don't skip Doug now. Don't you skip Doug Martin. Uh-oh. <laughs> Doug's Uh-oh. very notable there. Uh, you can't skip you? Doug. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to talk about him because that's I your was, guy. I was going in there and you tried to go to the next topic. We went through 10 minutes of talking about injuries at any time. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead. Go for it, Doc. There's a lot of injuries here. Obviously, we're running out. Doug Martin's out. I did want to bring up Amir Abdullah being out for Amir the Abdullah. Lions. That was a very notable one. Yes, you're right about that one. <laughs> That's a, that's pretty big for them. And obviously, Doug Baldwin also being out for the Seahawks is another big one. Um, and last, the last two, and then we can definitely move on, Jonathan Stewart and Arian Foster. The running backs are taking a major hit this season so far. They are. They really are. And it's funny because um, wasn't there an article about Adrian Foster and – just talking about like how he's an atheist and he's always constantly getting injured. And one of the things that we like to do in debates among friends or especially the professor is we comment after certain things and it was just so nasty about some of the things they were saying about the guy. And I'm just like, you know, he just can't catch a break. No, I was posting about it. One thing I said was how ironic it is Are being at you know, in religion, obviously, of course, we're not going to get too deep into it, but Absolutely. it's like they say, treat your body like a temple, you know what I mean? Like, yep. that's it, but that's on the religious side. And I made the, the statement, hey, this guy gets hurt every single year. But then again, being looking at it objectively and subjectively, so is a lot of other people. Absolutely. But moving on, obviously, to other topics. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we're going to move on to the next topic uh, today. An article came out for the NFL's most disliked player, uh, I guess, for this season, heading into this season, during this season. And I will tell you the top five. And this is Bleacher Report, correct? Yes. Shout out to Bleacher Report, always holding us down. Also, Forbes as well, too. Okay. At number five, from. The Pittsburgh Steelers, Big Ben Rosselberger. Mm. Well, that's, you know, a lot of people don't like At number four, he's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy, but he's a Brady guy. Tom Brady of the New England Patriots. Gotcha. I could see that. People, a lot of people think he's a cheater. Number three, Ndamukong Sue. A lot of people think he's a dirty player. Number two, and I, I'm going to move a little bit away from the doctor because I might get a sweet kin. Oh, shocking you, man. Jameis Winston. So unbelievable that Jameis is on this list. He didn't even do nothing. <laughs> All he did was try to get some crab legs. And everybody's jumping all over him. And at number one. I mean, is this really a surprise? Is this it's really not. a surprise? It's not. It is. 
It is. It's Eli Manning. Oh my God, Eli! <laughs> it's not Eli. It's not Eli. I'm just getting into the skin of Mr. October. He's coming on next week, so you know, gotta stir up the pot a little bit. Do a little bit of uh, James Harden. There you go, doctor. A little uh, Euro step on us. A little Euro step. Ha. Huh. Number one is Colin Kaepernick. For obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. But I mean, how is he the most disliked player for standing up for something that is so wrong? You know what I mean? <coughs> you know, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, Without us getting too political. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, I have to interject here as the former service member of the group, all right? Absolutely. I take issue with the fact that, or I should say not with the fact that you were protesting. By all means, mm-hmm. if you don't like the butter on your PB&Js, protest the hell out of that shit. Don't care. My issue is the form of protest that he took. It right. wasn't that he sat out the game. It wasn't that he was on the sidelines or in the stands holding up his sign or even going out actually speaking about it. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that you chose the laziest and yet most disrespectful way that I can think of, short of pissing on a flag, to protest what is going on. Well, it is not. I, oh, no, I go mean, ahead. There's, and this is the thing I think a lot of people on, on social media that I've noticed. A lot of people say, okay, he's gotten everybody's attention. Do you think that if had he done it another way that he would have gotten the attention that this topic really does deserve, rather other than going above and beyond and disrespecting? I mean, sometimes when you want to make change, you have to piss at least some people off. You have to. You know, you, you got to. You got to go big or go home to create the change that you want to see. And now this is great, created national news. So, of course, in any protest, somebody's got to be upset. Uh, I mean, do you think he would have gotten the the same reaction, let's say, had he, I don't know, retired from football? You know what I mean? Like, cause that's the only thing he could do, retire from football until which nobody would have cared. You know, well, but... no, see, I'm going to interject there. It's not the fact that people wouldn't care. Then people will sit there and go, well, he quit anyway, so obviously his cause wasn't that important for him to stay the cause. See, that that's the issue with this, the fact that people are so callous well, well, in, in, their, in their thought process. I'm saying if he would have retired because of the police brutality instead of kneeling for the flag, like if he did something like that or, hey, I'm... I don't know. I don't really know what he could have did. I mean, he took a knee. He's donating all his money. I mean, but money is not going to be the one that that does it. But would he have gotten the attention of the United States had he not took his knee? And that's the part I think that's really, really interesting about this whole protest and other people joining. It's like there does need to be a change. Obviously, we know people were killed within the last 48 hours. Again, I, I can I, I sympathize with that. I understand. I mean, again, as a young African American male in America, I am already in the crosshairs. I understand that. But every protest, every effective protest, mm-hmm. has some form of loss. Absolutely. Whether it is a loss of time, a loss of life, a loss of food, a loss of something. What is he losing in this? I mean, obviously. I think personally, I think he's gonna eventually lose his job. <laughs> I mean, although the ownership has backed him right now, he's still a, a pretty, pretty good quarterback. But obviously, if this goes too far, he'll lose his job. If he gets cut from the Forty ers we'll just say most likely he's done. Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, short of riding up after the game and punching a cop out, he's not gonna lose his job because the day after this happened, the sales of his jerseys went up forty nine percent. He's not gonna lose his job as long as we are all talking about this. Yeah, but it's for people supporting it or people trying to burn it. Granted, there's only like three videos of people burning it. So I mean, obviously, if it's three people burning it, then you know 
it must be a million people doing it. I mean, that's just the way because the media oh, works. Uh, I think people are. This is people's way of supporting. You know, like people get. You, there's a lot of guilt in the world, and if people have to spend thirty to sixty dollars on a jersey to support a cause, they would. Are, are we talking swing men or authentic? <laughs> Kaepernick's a backup quarterback. His jersey <laughs> that fifty dollars, like for real. He, he, I don't care what jersey it is. He, he, they better be getting replicas. They better not be getting no authentic. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, still, I think the the authentic might be more expensive. But I'm really thinking that his might not be because he's a backup quarterback in the NFL. I, I just I'm just not buying that. <laughs> but I mean, I, at the same time, if I were the owner. And I'm the one that's collecting money off the sales of these jerseys. Do I really care what it is you do with it as long as you purchase it? And, mm, and not really. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Uh, we actually got a we actually got a uh, opinion from the chat. Uh, once again, the people like to talk in my ear. They like to say stuff in the chat, so I gotta say it before it drives me insane. Uh, Mr. October put, I don't necessarily agree. Sometimes the most polarizing protests are the ones that get the most notice. Protest isn't meant to be PC politically correct for those out there it's supposed to get people to notice and be controversial which is what debates a friend, but among friends is all about brought to you by Stella Antoise <laughs> to get them to sit up and take notice the flag is an emotional symbol that we all love and support but the most American thing one can do is question or call out problems you see in our society that is wrong and I initially was against what he did of course, I think, on that. Were, I think everybody was initially against it, but now that people are, are having their eyes open, I think it's going to change. A lot of people are going to be kneeling. It's going to be real interesting over the next couple of weeks. And I stand to be corrected. Talent Carpenter's jerseys are going a lot higher than the $100. And I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the media attention, but it looks like they jacked the prices up. But I think it it, is. Oh, no, it's, it's, it is. it's because of both. I mean, just, yeah. just think about it. It's obviously because I mean, again, if, if I were an owner and I know you're going to buy this and I'm standing to make money off of it, of course I'm going to jack the price up. You're going to buy it because you want to show your support. I'm going to sell it because I want the money. Absolutely. I mean, not to mention, you probably inflate the prices just a wee bit yeah, for no, the tickets. Only, only just a mere because people want to see there. But, but, but think about it like this, though. People want to be there. They want to see what Kaepernick's going to do now. So it's sort of becoming a media frenzy. I'm not saying there's on the level of Tebow mania. Of course oh, well, You know, of course. There's, there's no beaver fever. But, oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> get out. Get out the studio right now. Get out of here. Get out. <laughs> Technical foul, sir. Security! <laughs> but, I mean, you know, just in response to Mr. October's comments, I understand that. I'm of the mindset that protests are supposed to be an instrument of change. Absolutely. It's all great to bring up a conversation, but at the end of the day, they're just words. Actions speak louder. And so yeah. if your form of protest isn't helping to bring about some form of change, then what good is it? And I think that's where we don't know because this form of protest has never been done. Now, I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with people, obviously, uh, who went through the 60s and 70s. You know, they went through the, the sit-ins and, the, you know, the, what, the boycotts. But at this time... People aren't. I personally think that people have to stop spending their money. I mean, that's that's the only way we got to stop spending money. We got to start holding on to yeah. our money, and we got to do it differently. We got to affect the economy because we make up a large chunk of the economy. Um, but in this particular situation, we can't boycott anything. Like I've seen Facebook where they'll stop stop shopping at McDonald's on September 26th or something like that for a day. It's like, no. How about we stop going places for? You know, this Christmas, how about we don't go shopping? We we curb our Thanksgivings. You know what I mean? Like we really make change through the economy because that's where we'll make or them. stop or stop shopping at major businesses. Exactly. I mean, I mean, not 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 to talk about business real quick, but you know, Wells Fargo is currently on the fire. Exactly. Like stop doing those kind of things. Investing in black businesses. You know, like those are the kind of things that have to be, have to be changed. But I mean. I, when he first did this, I was just like, I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything about it. I didn't feel disrespected. I wasn't happy. I was just like, that's his choice. I get it. I never really, you know, took 
pride in saying the national anthem because I, you know, it's one of those things where you're growing up, you're just like, oh, we have to do this. You know what I mean? Just like any any school song, it's like, what do I have to do? I got to put my my left hand. Is it my left hand? Oh no, it's my right hand. Oh, okay. Over my heart, right. and then say state say something that you've been doing for the past eighteen years. Right. I definitely understand what you're talking about. Right, because you're yeah. and you're. You're like, okay, why are we doing this? And nobody ever explains why you're doing this. Absolutely. You just say, oh, it's the Pledge of Allegiance. But it's a, it's a Pledge of Allegiance for what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I didn't get it. But, of course, growing up, you, you know, you go through sports and everything. But, uh, you know, obviously that, that's, that's here nor there. So, I mean, I know we're running short on time. Professor Plus. All right. So, uh, last point about this, uh, Mr. October. Uh, while I agree with your statement, I'm also going to disagree. Um, he, he said that Wells Fargo was pure evil with what they did. They are. The reason why I disagree is because one of the things that I've talked about, and you know, myself and the doctor talked about this, and even the sergeant, and plenty of times as well too, business within themselves is very corrupt. The oh. issue is when they get caught is when you see the things that's been going on. Something like this, yeah. Wells Fargo's been going on for a long time, and I've been stating this. I've been stating this, yeah. but, you know, it only happens once, you know, it hits a major level, and once okay. again, the wrong people don't get fired, and right. the people who just try to make ends meet get fired, but right. we're going to move on. We're going to move on to our last subject, because we do have a... Hey, there's no such thing as halfway crooks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shout out to D Rabbit. <laughs> okay, so yes, let's move on. <laughs> so our last subject is talking a little bit about esports. We haven't talked about that since uh, a little bit after Evo, uh, at yeah, least in 2016. It's been a while. It's been a while. We're gonna have to start incorporating that a little bit more. But uh, we had ourselves a couple of uh, tournaments. You know, a couple of tournaments okay. happening. And one of the major ones that happened was uh, Japan Cup 2016 out there in the lands of the rising sun. And you would think that a Japanese player would win that event. Well, you'd be wrong. Uh, Gamer B from Taiwan uh, took first place, defeating South Korea's Punko. And quite possibly a great matchup um, between the two. And... What even made it more sweeter for Gamer B is the fact that he also proposed, or he made public of his proposal to his girlfriend as well, too. So that was, you know, just sweetening the pot a little bit. That's uh, not, not even playing fair. <laughs> but he had to win. He had to win to execute this. Absolutely. Yeah, he didn't win. You know, know, and it's I one understand. Of those things, you know, her friend is sitting there next to her looking at her boyfriend. Like, well, <laughs> and the other one that I want to talk about is the Manila Cup uh, that happened as well too that happened the weekend of um, the 10th to the 11th and one of the doctor's favorite players actually won that event what was and that favorite player name is oh my god Justin Wong oh my god which is too soon <laughs> he's kind of good man I mean it's you know, expect nothing less of these guys, honestly. As long as it wasn't that personal infiltration. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, he's not. He's not kidding at all. <laughs> I'm but, it's the champ. It's so hilarious. <laughs> but we are actually now running low on time. Uh, we got ourselves a special track for you tonight uh, from Zaid Tabadi, aka Red Rapper, someone who we listen to a lot. Uh, he does a lot of stuff with uh, the FTC fighting game community, uh, some songs within there. So we're going to leave you with a brief history. Uh, check him out. We're going to put a link out in the description for this video. Uh, Sergeant, uh, do you have a Twitter handle for the people out there for them to follow you? I do not. I am not a bird, and thus I do not tweet. However, tweet, tweet. <laughs> no, they can always catch me on Facebook if they can find me. Um, I'm not going to put it out there because, you know, my real name's on the tag, but... Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, and be on the lookout because the debate amongst friends handle will be up on the site here soon. Absolutely, absolutely. Debate among friends is still growing. We're going to be large and in charge, and we're going to completely take over. 
But Word. we're going to leave you with our track tonight. Once again, I am the professor. That is the doctor. This is the sergeant. And we'll catch you all next week. Thank you very much. Peace and love. Peace. We'd like to take you back to the old days. Back in the 20s when people were getting plenty off a dollar if they wanted it, some of us getting pennies. The jazz clubs popping, the girls were swinging sexy, and the liquor dried up and nobody was getting any. The hustle rolled in and opened up every shop. A dollar off of anything they could put on the rocks. Couple bottles before party were taking over the docks. Luciano Capone put all their money in shots and pops. The Robin Hoods and bootleggers, Nucky Robinson's Bug Seagulls, the new era. The opportunity cars making the party run. Valentine's Day came ringing in with a Tommy gun. And there it go, the FBI want him and the crack down come and Alphonse that got him and the liquor came back as the G's moved fast right after the market all crashed to figure out the hustle baby to figure out the hustle baby to figure out the hustle baby they don't know they don't know yeah okay where we going all right So, after the war, the economy kinda soared But people back in the stores, America back in form News told us the Reds were knocking up on the shore And people hung signs saying no colors up on their doors Well, Martin saw that shit and said, yeah, we're ready to try it Boycotted the buses and made the news on the wires Made the march on the Selma right after the church fire And let them know that the crow when this motherfucker retired He moved it, it's part of the movement I'ma take all the bruises I'ma stand on the steps of the Capitol here and say you're not